Hey guys, nothingwire.com and today we have Sony's brand new flagship Xperia Z2. It's one of the best and most awaited phone this year were except the Z1 owners probably because the Z1 was released only just above uh, six months ago and in this video we're gonna tell you what's in the box here we're gonna tell you about the hardware we'll check out the UI and performance and hopefully at last uh, you'll be able to decide the Z1 users whether you should upgrade to the Z2 the Z users whether you should and others whether you should skip the other flagship to get this baby so let's get started you see first it's a very typical Sony box you have the same black and white color combination and then it's your phone here which also by the way looks much like the Z1 nonetheless you have nothing on this side I can say it's a black model and it also comes in white and purple just like other Z flagship models you have your triluminous display X reality Bions processor it's not a Bions X uh, which comes in Sony cameras by the way you have XMOR RS sensor 1 by 2.3 inch sensor size f by 2.0 maximum aperture 4k is introduced in z2 as well at 30 fps not 60 and then it also ip58 certified nfc and you have some quick specs here 20.7 mp sensor you have a snapdragon 801 chipjet 2.3 gig uh, great 400 cpu your adreno 330 gpu and 3 gb of ram that's a beast then you can say 55 and 58 certified and 5.2 inch full HD screen IPS Wi-Fi and of course Android KitKat and the Sony custom UI on top so let's go ahead and check out what's in the box first so as expected you would see the gorgeous Xperia Z2 device here but we'll come back to the device just in a bit We'll see what else is there so you have some startup guide and side informations and all you have the earphones they're not exactly uh, noise cancelling type however let's check out uh, they have volume control here so the, you have the call control the mic but no volume control um, the audio jack is also silver plated and not gold plated gold plated are better in filtering the sound then you have your USB wall adapter flat window and then your micro USB 2.0 USB data cable so those are the stuffs now that's your Sony Xperia Z2 it's beautiful looks much like the Z1 but there are subtle differences here and there which we're just going to talk about so the Xperia Z2 like the Z and Z1 looks absolutely drop dead gorgeous you have the same omnibalance design you have the same piece of glasses on both sides and then the single aluminium slab here on the slab that kind of connects both the glasses and you have the whole inner housing right there now um, this one has a slightly bigger screen a 5.2 inch screen compared to the 5.1 inch screen of the Z1 and unlike the Z1 you would see actually um, on the back the aluminium housing kind of just pops out maybe to give that extra protection whenever you keep this on a flat surface which is very minute but if you look closely you will see it. it's kind of very slightly coming out yeah so the 5.2 inch um, IPS display full AC that means 1920 by 1080 pixels you also have a departure from the Z1 welcome one you have the speakers situated on the top here this is this small little part there those are the speakers so that's a very welcome addition and you should now get a very good sound output because the sound is directly coming onto your your face you also have the notification bar there you see light out there then you have your front camera and then your notification um, the sensors and stuff here your soft key would be on the screen effectively making the 5.2 inch screen slightly smaller 
it's very very glossy both the front and the back side so they will attract a lot of fingerprints you can see it's fingerprint all over that's one of the things I, and that annoys me about the Xperia Z but then you can't help it if you want glass you would uh, need to carry a small handkerchief probably to keep I know cleaning your phone it looks very classy nonetheless so on this side you have micro USB 2.0 port plus your micro sim card slot and then your dock connector here the eyelet for your lanyard and then speak um, the mouthpiece and then dedicated hardware key volume rocker the metallic power button and then your micro SD card slot okay. that supports up to 128 GB in addition to the 16 GB already available inside you also have a secondary noise cancelling mic 3.5 mm jack so behind you have the 20.7 MP Exmor RS 1x2.3 inch f by 2.0 camera autofocus that records at um, 4K at 30 FPS, full HD at 60 and 30 FPS and so on. It's also accompanied by an LED flash, Sony branding here, the NFC area and then you can see Xperia. Yeah, so it's again IP58 certified so it's kind of dust and waterproof you can simply put it inside one meter of water for up to 30 minutes and nothing will happen so you see it will operate just fine operate as in when you take it out from the water it will operate just fine but the moment it's in water the duration you cannot operate see it does not take your touch input anywhere which we wanted this to evolve really and I want Sony to work on this probably if I want to walk underwater I don't know why I would but maybe you know for some reason even the camera does not switch on so you have a dedicated hardware key by the way for the moment you press the dedicated hardware key the camera opens so at least you can take your photos if not with this then with this see it suddenly it uh, took a photo but none of the soft keys work underwater so brilliant screen brilliant design brilliant look and feel you would also see that uh, despite of being a slightly larger screen the z2 is almost of the same size of the z1 mainly because of the thinner bezels now the z1 used to have a uh, pretty thick bezel so it has now a thinner bezel we still wish we will always wish that this soft cut keys here goes here because there is a wasted space here you can put the keys here and then you would effectively get the whole screen real estate anyway so the Sony Xperia Z2 runs on Android KitKat 4.4.x plus Sony's own custom UIs on top so you get the very familiar unlock screen you can directly initiate the camera from here you can also uh, see the notification quick notifications here but no options to add any widgets you'll have to see in the settings whether there are options and then you get to the home screen the usual way of adding stuff to the home screen you can either long press here and you can add widgets apps wallpapers or themes there are a number of themes now available uh, pretty good let's check out the notification bar you have the notification you can clear all of them just by tapping this button or single or single just by going there and then your some of your quick settings you can also edit those drag them you can sort them according to however you want them to be you can long press on any of these to go to the full settings there you see Wi-Fi Wi-Fi there so your app dock is customizable you can drag it onto any icon to create a folder long press on back nothing happens long press here and you can go to the google now you can also go to what's new which is a new app that came on the z2 which kind of tells you recommends you new apps and games and media that you would like this one will take you to the recent app menu you can close one by one just by swiping or close all just by tapping that button also has this favorite tools favorites bar is what you call so this I call it favorite tool because this is called favorite bar so you have active clip and all those things you can also add you know various widgets and stuff now what happens here for example 
you activate calculator it will come to a part of the screen so that while you're doing something you can simply um, you know maybe you, you are doing some math and you suddenly need the calculator so you can just go to the favorite bar pop up the calculator and do the calculation here while the application is open on the background you can also move it around so it's pretty convenient and then that's your main app dock so you would see that it has lots of Google's own Android apps like a Chrome and Play Store and Google Plus and YouTube and Maps and stuff. It also has Sony's many in-house tools and apps. For example, Walkman is Sony's music app, album is Sony's own galleries, movies is Sony's video uh, app, then Sony Select is Sony's own app store. Sony does not have, very curiously by the way, a default browser of its own. It almost has a default in-house app for almost anything. But default browser still is Chrome. We're not complaining though. And then you have social life. And then you also have some other stuff like backup and new reader. Track ID, wise pilot and why not. You have also some third party, a uh, PlayStation. You have also some third party apps like Vine for example. You have facebook out here and such there you go you also you have line and office suite and big flakes so a lot of uh, third party have a lot of bloatware here we um do not like including apps which are like not extremely popular not necessary for example big flakes and line and stuff so, you know a lot of people might not use line a lot of people might use whatsapp uh, so and this bloatware cannot be removed um, these are the games we install for testing you also have so this one dungeon fifa fruit ninja so this four and five games are ours they don't come with the phone so you have xperia launch and background defocus and ar effect are some of the camera features that we're going to show you while we demonstrate the camera and you can simply drag on from the left to get the menu you can search app uninstall any you can sort them you can also go to play store or sony's own app store to install various apps the xperia z2 has a gorgeous screen as i told you 5.2 inch ips display full HD. it also comes with almost all of sony's latest tv technologies like your triluminous technology x reality technology or life color led technology now what all these uh, technologies does is that it makes uh, it now supports more color gamuts for example the life color technology and then uh, triluminous technology makes your pixels kind of um, you know it's 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 more like a, a back side illuminated pixels kind of a technology actually makes the colors pop out and at times unnaturally but then the screens are extremely sharp and bright you can see the icons here are round but they are not pixelated at all in fact the screen is much better than the one on the z1 uh, plus it this also has great viewing angles as you can see here the colors are kind of popping out the saturation and hue is very cool the wing angles are also great but then the reflection takes over at some point mainly due to the glossy screen and not uh, due to the display exactly yeah. under sun display also is quite decent you see it's great amazing one of the sharpest display uh, possible but that also comically uh, presents another thread is that whenever you take any photo they look extremely good on this phone mainly because of the display when you take it out on your PC they do not look that detailed or that sharp so you have to keep in mind because this is like first of all it's a 20.7 MP photo that only has to cover this much of area so all pixels are kind of you know joined in and uh, due to the all great technologies the colors and everything pops up the picture looks very sharp but when you take it on the PC the pixel obviously gonna blow up and you see a much less sharp pictures This is a perfect display. You guys, did you see that? I just was like, what? Great viewing angles. I'm gonna just pause it for a bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bump up the brightness here. And instead of adapt, 
and now it looks absolutely gorgeous also uh, it will eat more battery you see Absolutely gorgeous. No discoloration, no fuzziness, perfect. It's almost too bright anyway. So this just might be the best display we've seen on a mobile phone yet. The dialer is big and great even for the fattest of the fingers so is the keyboard see uh, a very expert like keyboard no dedicated number or you can however customize this keyboard yeah, from your keyboard settings and keyboard skin you can personalize all this stuff and then also it looks great in landscape mode as well yeah and your fingers kind of reach so you can write long article maybe like this and it's very very convenient call quality is excellent so is the reception there were no uh, call drops on both side both of us on both side of the phone uh, could hear the voices properly and there were no dead air as well the album looks usually you have the most recent thumbnail the biggest and then you have all of them arranged in stack so you can simply go to one photo and then tap it you can favorite it you can also edit it Sony also gives you multiple options it has all these apps the default photo editor photos pixlr express and sketch the photo editor um, you know kind of does a very basic editing you can apply some filters colors some frames you can alter the photo like crop and rotate and stuff and then all these effects however this one will let you do some uh, area specific customization as well for example if you wanna brighten up you can choose your brush size your opacity then brush or erase and you can simply go ahead and tap this area only to make it bright see you can also choose the brush size it becomes bigger yeah so that way and there are lots of effects here so uh, the picture editing stuff is really covered and uh, we're gonna check the music app now so that's the music UI the Walkman again pretty uh, simple you get Jive you also get Michael Jackson's latest album free as a promotion uh, with the Z2 so you have them arranged in artic um, artist albums the usual way you yeah. know with your connected devices no option of folder by the way yeah, and then go to home and you see all these albums again arranged you can clear audio that's uh, audio enhanced technology you can also throw wirelessly share your music download music info and then your settings so you have your sound effects clear audio dynamic normalize a little uh, basically normalize the volume across um, the songs and everywhere let's play a song speaker output actually surprises us now the speakers uh, were situated right at the front it's Walkman Sony sound output are known to be some of the best in the industry the speaker output here is not loud enough it has that bass and that kind of the treble tuning is also nice um, as you can add all these stuff however 
uh, it's not loud enough I suspect that's mainly to do with the you know water sealing coating that you have water sealing body that you have it's more close to the speaker do not have that um, sound that that much of a vibration for it to be loud enough or bassy enough that bassy enough it's it's quite bassy but not to my liking I mean I expected a lot more from a Sony device however this problem actually was with Z1 and Z as well because Sony has to make this device a uh, uh, no, I mean a watertight or a uh, dust proof device so the vibrations of the speakers there are not so much as would have liked so the uh, speaker output here is well more than decent it's good but it's not great it's not sony standard it certainly lags behind some of the other flagships like the image which sound output it's gorgeous however it's a totally different story when you listen to it uh, via your own earphone i suggest do not use the supplied earphones here they are very good but then you use some of the premium um, noise cancelling type of earphone and the sound is like mind-blowing I've shown you the video playback during the display demonstration but then let's see how the audio and video are syncing how the sound output is the video sound output is much better see? you have much more frequencies covered here in the video mode this perfect synchronization between the audio and the video. So the sound output on a video mode is much better than the audio. The 20.7 MP back camera and the 2.2 MP front camera here performs great. The 20.7 MP back camera has a Sony G lens and as I told you before it, uh, it has 1 by 2.3 in sensor size. It also has a maximum aperture of f by 2.0 which is great accompanied by an LED flash so that's the UI. Yeah, so I'm in I auto mode so you have your flare settings here you can quickly switch between the front and the back camera from here you also have extensive settings you see aspect ratio 6.9 or 4 by 3 so you can go ahead self timer burst with long press we'll just take it high speed and then self timer and also some of your you know video settings and then say quick launch so you do not have your you cannot choose the size of your images and videos mainly because it's the i auto mode if you like to rather take things into your own hand you can go to the manual mode and now you have much option you have the wb options and this um dialog frequently pops up because the phone heats up a lot it's a glass like both back and front it heats up a lot and you also feel the heat right now I'm feeling the heat here it's very very hot here and that you can see when you have the camera on for sufficient time see camera will turn off temporarily so you'd see this dialogue frequently so you cannot actually keep the camera open for a long you know for a longer time longer time I mean uh, if you keep it on continuously for about even two minutes I mean in one and a half two minutes then it's gonna shut down and uh, if you start shooting videos and it goes longer and longer the phone becomes really really hot and there's the same thing when you play games so they become very very hot we just get the camera closed for just for a moment to show you the UI so in this mode you have now much more control over the settings so there's your flash the white balance and then now you can select your resolution 20.7 in 4.4 by 3 or 15.5 in 16 by 9 you have a focus mode and ISO goes up till 800 you have the metering center and image stabilization yeah you also have some settings here now you can go to video 
and then you can see the video resolution full HD 30 FPS or full HD 60 FPS both in wide screen now it does not give you 4k um, option here because that's a separate section or a def uh, separate scene here altogether so let's quickly take some snaps as you can see once it locks focus it's very very fast but up, of course not with a zero leg but acquires the focus also pretty fast yeah. like, uh, the video recording also starts almost instantly you can also take stills while recording the video let's quickly look at some of the other modes so you have superior auto you have a manual and there you see the 4k video mode yeah so it records 4k video at that's like double the full HD resolution at 30 fps only you have some limited settings and then you have something called a time shift video with the help of which you can slow down the uh, video you slow down any motion then you have your background defocus which kind of um, gives a uh, that fake depth of field effect to your subject then the augmented reality effect which have all these options and you can see uh, this dinosaur for example if I select a dinosaur you'll see the dinosaurs on the background almost realistic you have also some other settings like the sweep panorama and stuff so the Xperia Z2 gives extremely detailed picture with a natural saturation and hue on the inner flight it's a very very good camera 20.7 megapixel is a lot of resolution and you see that so even if you crop the image to a great level the details aren't lost much it also kind of gives slightly also has slightly more dynamic range than the Z1 so your shadows uh, would be uh, and it does not clip the shadows much so you can still recover um, you know some of the details even on a JPEG and in general your shadows are kind of now more brighter and more uh, and I'm not less shadows because of that added dy dynamic range over the Z1 under low light however um, the pictures aren't that detailed well they are much better than the other Xperia Z devices but then still it lacks the details the images pixelate specifically when you see in 100% crop the details are sadly missing now the too many megapixel count actually works against the picture quality here because um, under low light that's not kind of very good thing the video recording as the image is exquisite quality there is no fuzziness no discoloration whatsoever no softness in the video even on the corners of the screen uh, under inner flight under low light it's again similar to the still images although you have uh, you know very good um, you know brightness and stuff the, the problem is the details are missing they're like and slight fuzziness also the 4k video however is absolutely DSLR class so I strongly suggest if you have enough battery left and if your phone does not hit off that frequency let's say you just want to uh, click a very short a few seconds video only try the 4k it's very very sharp but then note that not a lot of players or TVs can play 4K right now. But then, for most of the situations, the full HD 60p is absolutely perfect. Apart from that, let's check out the, some of the other apps. For example, I just showed you the Watch New app. You see games and uh, um, apps. You also have your PlayStation Store. By the way, this device is PlayStation certified. You also have Sony Select, Sony's own app store. You can download your games themes and apps from your, your Facebook social life news which kind of aggregates all your um, social media accounts into one to give you uh, frequent real-time updates you have tools here the new readers and backups and stuff usual thing track ID you can simply tap it and when you listen to a music you can know which music is that what am I listen to let's say you have smart connect a wise pilot all this stuff Sony music here PlayStation app Vine 
Sony Live. So a lot of Sony's in-house apps are very very useful apps. Now I don't know for example how many of you would watch Sony Live but that's still Sony so I understand they would like to they are like you know excited enough to include those but then some of the other things like big flicks and office suit and line and vine for example are they're not the most necessary or most they are like so popular that you absolutely need them they have good enough options at times better than them so and they're free so uh i suggest do not include them in the room so that we can at least uninstall them and we can install the apps that we use Anyway, so uh, the phone is absolutely smooth. There is no lag whatsoever, even during heavy multitasking or coming out from a uh, you know demanding let's say game or app to the home screen straight away or you know swiping around the home screen even if it's laden with widgets. Basically, doing any transaction, you won't feel any lag at all thanks to the 801 chipset it's one of the most powerful handsets right now we also check the gameplay on the xperia z2 and whatever game we threw into the device we uh, played fruit ninja fifa 14 asphalt 8 nova 3 dungeon hunter 4 we played all this game and they all are from different categories with different level of demand over the cpu and power and ram and the 801 chipset and the 3GB RAM and the Adreno 330 GPU handle them absolutely perfectly without breaking a sweat. Every game here plays perfectly. Before telling you whether I should get this device or not, uh, let's first check out some of the good and some of the bad things about it and then let's talk about some of the competitors. So some of the good things, it has a gorgeous look and design and it's also IP58 certified so it's dust and water uh, proof up to some level at least. It has probably the brightest display out there an absolutely gorgeous display one of the most powerful uh, flagship phone here uh, the sound output via earphones is also great video playback um, great the picture quality under inner flight is also gorgeous the gameplay excellent benchmark scores were right at the top so uh, this device actually has almost everything going for it but then it's not without for all devices are number one fault is that both sides are made of glass and that's a traditional Xperia Z fault both side glass so they are first of all prone to fingerprints as you can see glossy but the most serious problem is they're also prone to um, scratches and stuff so you can see there I have a healthy scratch on the back here yeah number two is that uh, although it's IP58 certified it's waterproof but then uh, when you take it out of the water um, even after wiping sometimes the um, UI um, does not function as expected number three and the most annoying of them is the heating up problem so the device heats up pretty quickly and it's glass not plastic so the heat is uh, not retained inside uh, it's coming out so you feel a lot of heat here it's a good thing for the device because the heat is at least coming out so it's um, uh, you know it's not gonna burn um, the circuits and other mechanisms inside but then it's bad for the one using it because when you're heating up specifically uh, you know when you're taking still here on the camera the camera will automatically shut down to reduce that heat but if you're recording videos or you're playing games where the camera cannot shut down this part really really heats up and it's at times it feels almost tough to you know keep holding the device the fourth one is that uh, it's almost of the size of the Z1 I still feel slightly bigger and uh, despite of being a gorgeous device still just fits into the hand just out of the comfort zone but still fits into the hand but because it's all glass and glass and metal there is no matte finish there is no rubber finish anywhere does not give that secured hole now, i have almost on the verge of dropping the device three four times you and it it's very easy to drop this device keep slipping off your hands now let's talk about some of the competitors here so 
Z2 is right at the top so it has all the flagship from other companies as competitors for example you have the Samsung Galaxy S5 you have HTC M8 um, you also have like Note3 which is already existing but then there are also some other devices that are just round the corner the G3 was only announced yesterday and that's one hell of a device even G2 is we also have uh, you know news that probably note 4 is around the corner around in around october and then the much awaited iphone 6 the major version of iphone 6 is also due to launch this year so does the z2 hold good against them well it holds very very good here and at least compared to the existing device i would say to the z2 is gonna be right at the top if you ask me personally Actually, I like this one better than the S5 and the M8. But then, I probably still would get the M8 mainly because of the glass and the heating issue. And you're not, uh, I mean, you're going to cover it and not much concern about um, the breaking of glass and all the smudges and everything. Then, by all means, get this over the M8. It does many things better than the M8. It's actually, overall, the devices better than M8 but mainly I would probably um, prefer the M8 if I have a preference for the construction alone. If you are a Xperia Z1 uh, owner then well you can skip this device because it's after all an incremental update. If you are Xperia Z owner this device still makes sense in a lot of way because Xperia Z was like long ago but, but by long ago I mean only about one and a half years so you still want to uh, probably wait for some other time because knowing Sony's release cycle you might see another device at the start of next year who knows. So uh, at the end of the day it would be right at the top uh, probably and uh, you know one of the two device that you should consider if you do not have money in your consideration set thank you